What is going on everybody and welcome to another Otter Creek Aquatics live stream. It's going to be a pretty fun night as I have two special guests with me tonight. And I specifically wanted to talk about buying fish online versus buying fish from a fish store. And the reason I think this is going to be an important live stream is because we're going to be able to differentiate the difference between buying here in the U.S. and buying in Australia. So the two guests that I have are both Australian. So we're going to get to hear their take on buying fish online or going to their local fish store and buying fish from there. So the first guest I have, you actually seen him in my last video. If you caught it, we did a top 10 on our easy aquarium plants and it is Blake's Aquatics. Jamo, thanks for having me. That should be a fun stream. Right. Looking forward to it. So if you want, I know some of the people may have already met you, but for the ones that haven't, if you just want to introduce yourself a little bit, tell them sure. what type of content you like to make, because yeah. he does have a channel that is right over 2,000 subscribers, so his channel is doing really well. No, thanks. Um, I'm just uh, everyday bloke that hoards fish tanks in his garage um got about <laughs> mid 30s of tanks now and basically if i can't breed it then i don't want to keep it um yeah i'm definitely into the horticultural side of things and breeding and and uh, that's what really gets me going so try and get a few unusual things and do um do guides on you know care for them breeding things and a few diy projects every now and then too so all right uh, yeah so the second guest that we have is Josh from Aquamate, and we've actually done a few different collabs together. We've done one on Endlers, and we've also live streamed quite a few times on each other's channel. So I'm going to go ahead and bring Josh in for those of you who haven't met him yet. And Josh, if you just want to introduce yourself a little bit. So I was just ordering some fish online. <laughs> oh, okay. I hope you're shipping them to my house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shipping fees from Australia to America. Oh, I'd hate to do it in reversal. I've seen how expensive it can be for a lot of Americans. But, yeah, it's been fun doing collaborations with both of you, actually. Um, all pretty different channels, but you guys are a lot smarter than me. So I'll just just here to be a pretty face. Right. <laughs> it is so now, it is interesting and we could sort of peel back the curtain a little bit and um we actually get along really well off the camera as well and i think there was a couple of times there we just sit around talking about youtube stuff and fish stuff and not fish stuff for hours and hours so um yeah it's good to have a chat with you guys uh in front of everyone <laughs> for once <laughs> Except for on mine and Blake's collab, it took me about two weeks to export my video. So we had to keep <laughs> pushing it back. <laughs> Luckily, Blake uploads every single day. So he's like, no, I don't worry about it. I got seven other videos I can throw in real quick. So, <laughs> yeah. so just to talk a little bit about the topic. So when it comes to buying fish, when I first started in the hobby, I would always go to like big, big box store, pet shops, pet smart, pet co different things like that, because I wasn't really familiar with the mom and pop shops. But after I found those out, it was kind of like, you know, push pet smart and pet co off to the side, not because I think their fish is bad because you can find some healthy fish. And if you watch them correctly and actually put in the work to get them medicated, you can actually wind up with some really healthy fish from those big box stores. But once I found those mom and pop shops that just have all kinds of selection of fish, that's where I switched over. And then once I started doing YouTube and found some other YouTubers that sold fish, that was when I really started looking online. And that's pretty much the only place I get fish now. I'll try to go to the mom and pop shops just to help them out with some sales, like buying different foods there. But the closest one to me is about an hour away. So 
if I'm up in that area, I'll stop by, check out their selection, talk to them about some about some fish for a while, and then I'll always buy some frozen food or something like that just to help them out because we need those businesses to stay in business so that if anything ever happens to the online business, we can always revert back to those mom and pop shops. So Blake, I guess from the beginning, where did you kind of get your fish and where have you came up to and where do you get them now? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we don't really have the pet cows and, and those sorts of ones down here, but uh, I was big into our versions of those, which is like a pet stock, a pet barn, um, and the best friend pets. That's what our main three are, I think. I might probably forget one, but... Um, and those were definitely the go-tos. And I was obsessive about that. <laughs> I would go to those at least every single day, just check. Even though we all know they only have the same 10 types of fish every single day. I don't really know what I was looking for, but... Um, yeah, I'd go there and check out all the new foods and all the decorations and all that. And, and if they got anything interesting, and that would always be good. Um, but yeah, after that, it was definitely, there was a couple of um, stores, which I thought were the bee's knees. They, they had a few different things. And now that I've sort of got out even further and cast the net a bit wider and gone to the stores that I've... Um, done tours of on my channel which are like the nature aquarium and new life keys and these sorts of things that if i was a new hobbyist and i went into those stores my mind would have just been blown immediately like it's probably a good transition to start at those big box stores get familiar with the staples and then you know maybe head to a bit more specialist bit more specialist bit more specialist and then you find out about you know wild betters or or whip tail cats or any you know just the myriad of things that are out there so um nowadays uh, i do live kind of far away from good stores like that so i do a lot of ordering online and and uh and we're not quite as good as, at shipping fish as you guys are but it's definitely revolutionary not having to sort of make a actual designated trip for hours basically take up the whole day to go and hunt for fish because just like you, Kendall, I've got a young family too, so it's hard to get that one over the line with the with the wife to say, hey, I'm going to just disappear for the whole day. We're going fish shopping. So I don't know right. how often I've been able to do that. All right. If packages if you, just turn up on the doorstep Monday or Tuesday, then, you know, who knows? <laughs> yeah, that's one thing I deal with too. If I go to those stores and, you know, I, I have them with me, it's – pretty much in and out because you know they're not wanting to hang out in there and talk about fish like i am so yeah. it's kind of like let's just run in here maybe check out a few tanks and grab some stuff and we're out yeah, but, yeah it, it is, I, it is hard like i used to get an hour lunch break and i would spend 10 minutes driving to one particular fish store spend you know 50 minutes or 40 minutes walking around the store 10 minutes drive back to work and I would love it. I would maybe, you know, get some food on the way or just have a bit of a light lunch. But I would prefer to actually walk around a fish store than to eat lunch, which is kind of weird. But I loved it. I still right. would do that. All right, Josh, what do you think, buddy? <laughs> That's, <tier Obviously>. comment. <laughs> <laughs> That's gold, Chris. But for everyone here, we were mucking around for about 20 minutes before this, and then it's gone all serious, and I'm like, oh, God, I've got to concentrate. <laughs> what I think is amazing is that, so growing up, the first fish place that I used to go to was actually a tropical fish farm. So there was one aquarium I knew of near me, um, but the fish farm seemed to be the best place to go to begin with, and then I sort of just only ever bought from that one single aquarium. But over the years, I think this is like before you could just jump on, before YouTube even existed, um, before you could just jump on the internet and just do some research on your own. Then I think that sort of came along. And what I think the internet's done really, really well is it's captured so many people's imaginations. I was talking about this with someone the other day that 20, 30 years ago was aquascapes were not, that was really rare. Um, it was not. A common thing to see and as we've learned more about different cultures and fish keeping and stuff everyone's like bringing 
different skate styles together and different um, different ways of keeping fish. And now what's really cool is that the brick and mortar stores are now becoming a place of inspiration as well. So I don't buy fish online like I think I've done it once or twice. Um, I always like to sort of see exactly what I'm buying. It's one of those, those pros and cons. Obviously, if you live far away, that's an easy way to get fish. But you can't really inspect the fish and make sure you're happy with the quality and all that sort of stuff. Um, but going into stores now and seeing different scapes and different species and then being able to do a bit of research, um, I find that the online fish selling and uh, um, and plants and, and everything compared to the, the shops, they've actually complemented each other. And I think it's made the whole industry like lift its game and the quality of fish and the quality of um, scapes and stuff out there now and the quality of products have improved vastly. So um, sort of right back to the beginning when you were saying we need those mum and pop shops there as well, definitely do because it's going to inspire new generations that are hands-on and then there's going to be new generations that are watching idiots like us <laughs> that, that go, I'll try that. Yeah, I think that plays a huge influence too is around here, like most of the bigger fish tubers that sell fish are located in the United States. Like I'm not sure if there's any bigger fish tube stores that you guys have over there in Australia. Like the ones that really come to mind are like Dan's Fish and Lucas Brett's. Let's see, Steam Fought Aquatics and a couple others. And those are the places that I mostly order my fish from. And I think it be it comes from, you know, earning that trust and knowing what you're going to get when you see them post that fish. So if I know if I'm going to be ordering a pair of Dumbo Guppies from Lucas Brett's, I know they're going to be high quality because I'm able to watch his videos I can see those those fish on his videos and I've ordered from him before. So I know it's always going to come in good quality. So I think, I think that plays a huge role when it comes to buying fish online. So I'm not sure if you guys really have someone like that in the over there in Australia that you typically watch and come to trust. But over here, there's I feel like there's a lot more people that are selling fish online to be able to get that good quality fish rather than having to go see it and making sure those fish are healthy. It's kind of like, you yeah. know, if you're ordering, they're going to be healthy. Um, I think we, we don't even have like Aquabid. I, I'm insanely jealous of, of you guys having access to Aquabid and being able to buy things from hobbyists easily. Like the closest we have to Gumtree, we, the closest we have is Gumtree, which is, similar to Craigslist um, and, you know, people who've seen my rant videos on Gumtree know how I feel about those. So um, it's quite often disastrous to to buy from hobbyists, uh, generally speaking. So we don't really have the options that you guys do over there. Um, right. Yeah. We just well, pretty much buy from, buy from um, chain stores and, and local fish stores, yeah. Blake so, does sell a little bit. Like you sell on Gumtree and um, and you are someone that I know you're really good at breeding fish. You've got a really good variety, really good at growing plants. Mm. You're probably the one that I would think of if someone said, oh, is there any like YouTubers that you can watch their videos and then buy some of their fish? I'm like, well, probably, yeah, I'd be looking at yours. Yeah, um, I guess so. <laughs> now that I've pumped you up, do I get free fish? Or <laughs> well, You've already got enough. I was about to say that's not exactly it. <laughs> big money it's maker. nice and to, cheap there too it's good <laughs> i tend to give away more than i sell really um, <laughs> but um yeah i don't know if, should we address the chat i noticed there's a couple of good questions happening down here yeah first off i just want to address that super chat you just sent me <laughs> that, <laughs> I wanted that is glory. my first one ever and i appreciate it i think this may be the first time i've been live since i've been monetized maybe but I mean, yeah Cichlids23 just called me out about me not being here for a while. So 
<laughs> yeah, but it's you'll, all be to, you'll be able to go back in time and watch me fiddle around trying to be subtle on my phone for 15 minutes while I try and put my card details in there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, one, uh, one question I see is from Palmer Aquatics. I think it's pretty good. It's yeah. kind of what we were talking about before we came in. It's just why do we do YouTube and what are our goals? Yeah. You want to so, kick off? It is your channel. I can take it. At, uh, <laughs> so the first reason that I got on YouTube was because I wanted to help people. So when I got back into the hobby after a few years, I seen that. I think I was watching aquarium co-ops videos like back to back to back. I'm like, dang, I'm like this dude is really helping me. Like if there's a way that I could take my hobby and help someone else and, you know, have fun while I'm doing it, like that's a sure thing. I'm taking my hobby that I'm already doing it, sharing it with everybody else and, you know, maybe make some money on the side doing it. But that was one of the main reasons that I started YouTube. My first video ever, I wasn't even in front of the camera. It was just my hands. And it was a my aquarium, my aquarium box unboxing. And I posted it because I wanted to win that mega box. So if you win a mega box from my aquarium box, you get like a cancer filter or a, I think it's a 48 inch light from Marine Land. So. Nice. Put that on there. I showed everybody what I got in that box, and yeah, it was literally just my hands, and you heard me talking in the background while I was opening it. But <laughs> I think it's crazy how far I've come since then. You know, I still stumble over my words, but it's been a whole lot of fun. I haven't been uploading as much recently. I told these guys I just got off working seven 12 hour shifts in a row, so it's been extremely tough. You know, I have a four-year-old at home. I have a girlfriend at home. So being able to spend time with them while working 90 hours back to back to back, you know, it's, it's tough, but I try to get as many videos out as I can. I currently or recently just upgraded my laptop. We talked about this a little bit before I had issues exporting my video when me and Blake did that collab. And it was because my laptop's basically just shot so I upgraded my laptop. So hopefully I'm going to be able to crank out some more videos, do some more live streams. But that's pretty much been my journey so far. But it's been a whole lot of fun. Um, for me, basically, uh, it all started with I just sort of expected nobody would watch. So it was more just to document um, what fish I was keeping. And I was bringing in and moving out tanks so fast that I couldn't really keep up and I just thought it would be a shame not to remember sort of starting this massive hobby. Um, so I just sort of started making videos of myself talking in the dark and, you know, walking around what was the fish room at the time and um, doing all those things. And, and it was really just as like a video diary or whatever for myself. Um, and then as people did start to come on, then, yeah, I really wanted to reinforce the research side of things. Like when I did start... Um, I basically watched videos for like five or six years before I even kept a single fish. So um, people like your aquarium co-ops and, and those sorts of people really did help me with the education side. Even actually the person who asked this question, Palmer Aquatics, I've watched heaps of videos on, you know, all the different cichlids and things that he was teaching me about. And, um, you know, definitely wanted to, you know, not necessarily be the main point of education or whatever, but maybe people watch one of Corey's videos and then, you know, they just want a bit of um, reinforcement on that. And then somehow they stumble upon my video and we both, you know, are, uh, saying that, the, the, well, the similar information because that's in theory, the good information. So um, just a bit of reinforcement and there's that much wrong information on the internet. I just thought it would help to put a bit of extra correct information out there. So, so that's right. what it's turned into and um, the main reason I keep going and the main reason I do daily videos at least for the moment is because I love the engagement and um, before before YouTube I was just keeping fish by myself in my shed and it was a bit of a lonely existence but since then I've run into people like yourself, Kendall, Josh obviously and other people here that I see in the chat as well and 
and that's definitely that's definitely what keeps me keeps the um, rock rolling. So yeah. Anyway, that's my little rant story. What about you, Josh? Hey, Josh, before you go, I just want to thank Sir Pond a lot for another five dollar super chat. It said <laughs> hashtag Otter Make Aqu- Otter Mate Aquatics. It may be a new thing, as we already talked about, but we'll have to see. <laughs> but yeah, what uh, what kind of got you started in YouTube, and where do you plan to go, Josh? Uh, what was it? I just spent a lot of time. I, I got back into fish keeping, been on and off for like 25 years or so, um, a few years ago, and... I was watching a lot of King of DIY, Solid Gold, Rachel O'Leary, and found that I was watching like watching it a lot. <laughs> and uh, I sort of just really liked following their journey. So for me, I mean, obviously education is really important and um, there's a lot of good videos out there. You can find a lot of information on a lot of species and you two in particular are really good at um, giving informative videos while being entertaining and you know, built this relationship, which is really cool, which is part of the fish fan, all that sort of stuff blew my mind. But I just really liked, didn't care if I wasn't going to learn anything by watching the next episode of their journeys. Um, and I just sort of th- thought, I'm on my own little journey here. Why don't I give this a crack? And I did a video not on the Aquamate channel um, as a bit of a trial run, uploaded it, Um wasn't there wasn't any sort of goal to get views or anything like that that out of it but i don't know it just sort of felt good i felt like i started something and i completed it and then at the end i had a little package to go all right i just did a video on pregnant guppies like that was really cool so it's become a passion project for me um it's like my own little area in my life that i can control things Mm. (laughs) and um (laughs) You know, to try and do a video a day, I don't know how you do it, Blake, but to do try and do one video a week or two videos a week or something like that, it's, on a weekend, I'll start going and cleaning up a fish tank and then grabbing the camera and talking about something else. And, and at the end of the week, I've got a five to 10 minute little video that goes out on YouTube. And for some reason, people watch it. <laughs> it's yeah. pretty awesome. It's cool, cool feeling. Um, and... Look, the goals are probably for me to become um, somewhat influential in the industry over here in Australia and try and work with local businesses and local stores, uh, local YouTubers, um, and try and find a role where me having a selling background um, and a sort of technical background that I can fit into that industry and, yeah, kind of carve out a little bit of a niche. And I think goes back to what I was saying a little bit earlier about fish stores can be inspiring and then you can get inspiration online and that sort of stuff and merging the two together. I think there's a lot of stores out there that haven't caught up with that yet and they do sort of they do sort of need to shift things around and take a look around, take a breath for a minute and uh, see some opportunities that are in front of them. And I'll gladly work with them and produce content and, um, yeah, hopefully – you guys keep watching it <laughs> yeah. and uh, the whole thing grows. And I think I think we all share this interest as well because, well, I know from our discussions that actually um, striving to get better with your video creating is a, is a side hop in itself, I think. like, um, And we all sort of talk about, you know, different things we can include in videos and different gear and all that, of course, as well. But um, that's kind of a separate interest as well. So you know, almost the video making side is as big as the fish keeping side for me these days, which is kind of interesting. Never thought that would happen. Yeah. And that's definitely the case with me. Like actually, so this is the, (laughs) Blake got some new cameras recently and I was like, Oh, really? That's something I really want to focus on with some better images and that sort of stuff. So I actually ended up copying him getting the same camera and while we were getting ready, I was just fumbling around for half an hour to try and use this camera as a webcam for the first time ever. And that's one thing I like to try to do with each video is do something out of your comfort zone and you'll learn. So like just doing this stream with you guys, I've just learned how to use this as a webcam 
and it looks so much better. And about a year ago, I learned my mic sucks. I need a new mic. So <laughs> I got this mic and um, my audio quality was better. So that side of stuff, yeah, as you said, you don't really think, hey, film fish because you love fish and make a video to inspire and educate people that a year later you'd be going, oh, I've got the new Sony camera and I'm going to get this mic and I've got these wireless things and you get right into that side of it as well. Yeah, it's pretty much a hobby within itself. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. When I go to making videos, you know, I'm always looking for new gear, new lighting, different things to make this setup better. Like if you see a lot of live streamers, they'll have like RGB lights in the background, different things like that. So, you know, it's always watching videos just to try and help you become a better YouTube creator. And yeah. that's one thing that I always do. Like I watch a lot of fish tubers, but a majority of the videos that I watch are trying to give myself a better understanding and learn more on a daily basis to help make my channel grow or help me become a better creator. And just because I think it'll be a better experience for the viewers and different things like that. So yeah, always trying to level up the game and eventually, hopefully, you know, we are all monetized. So actually making money, a lot of people don't want to talk about it, but making money as a creator has a huge influence on the amount of time and effort you can spend on making videos. So like I yeah. was saying, I just seven, 12 hour days in a row. If I was making more money making videos, then I would be able to work less at that job and put more time and effort into what I actually love, which is being in the fish room, making videos and sharing my hobby with the rest of you all. <laughs> That's actually a great segue into GRB's question as well, which is on the topic too. So, you know, that's a win-win. He was asking what are our largest online fish orders? And uh, before we went live with the stream, you know, I, was, I sort of mentioned, oh, I got an email. Luckily, you know, I got my payment for my videos or whatever this month. And that's really helpful because I just placed an order with the fish store that I probably needed that. Um, but my biggest fish order, it's not flexing or anything, but literally I would I had never ever seen puffers available for sale in Australia. And I didn't even hesitate. Like as soon as I saw the very first ad for them, I was like, I need four right now. And it was eight hundred and eighty dollars. But I have no regrets at all. Oh, <laughs> Just don't tell me. <laughs> but yeah, so I got four <laughs> It's going to sound ridiculous too because you could probably get four P puffers for 10 bucks or something. But, um, but yeah, that's what they cost here because they're illegal to import and all that. So um, we just don't have puffers in Australia. So I think my biggest order was probably three or four hundred dollars. And I've done it a couple times actually. One hmm. was for for fish and shrimp and the other one was for strictly plants so i had yeah. like a 350 dollar order from boost plant and yeah. you know it's it's crazy to say that you spend that much money but at the end of the day if you're you know making videos and getting some of that income back then it, it plays a huge role and yeah. while we're talking while we're talking about having buying fish online i do sell fish and plants online as well which is ottercreekaquatics.com and one of the biggest reasons i buy and make purchases like that is to you know grow those things out and breed them and propagate them that way i can share them with you all and try to make some money in the process yeah so and, it's kind of and like i guess that best <laughs> that was the thing when I was when I was pulling the trigger on that I sort of it was late at night and I was like you know that's just setting myself a huge challenge to breed these guys and even after I, I sent the money I was like oh geez I, I don't think I went to sleep for like three or four hours I was just laying there like what have I done <laughs> have I gone too far but anyway 
Um, I've had them for nearly a year now, and, and yeah, <laughs> they've been really good. Haven't bred them yet, but we'll get there one day. Hopefully. <laughs> what about you, Josh? I, haven't, I can't really think. I'm trying to remember. I know I've bought fish online once before, but I can't even remember what it was. It might have been a few years ago. Um, yeah, honestly, the only I can tell you the most expensive fish that I bought was for the saltwater tank behind me, which was um, a pistol shrimp and goby pair. And I've got a really cool pistol shrimp, and I don't have a goby anymore. So <laughs> that was uh, $250 for just the pair, and I just didn't have the right lid. <laughs> I've got a little bit I, of a gap in, in one of the I, lids there. And, um, had a blackout during the night. Everything came back on, obviously freaked out the goby, and the rest is history. <laughs> um, would I buy it? expensive fish online the one thing that might get me um over the line with something like that would probably i don't know i don't know enough about importing fish in australia but um discus i feel like online you might find some good good quality discus for a decent price as opposed to going into a shop and you know having a lot of shops might have say six or seven amazing discus about 300 dollars each and you sort of go, oh, am I really going to, if I want to get five of them, am I really going to drop, you know, 1500 bucks or something on those five when I only really like two of them and that sort of thing. So it's one of those situations where online you might find your timing is going to be better and you might get the product that you're actually after rather than waiting and biding your time for a local fish store to show something up. Hmm. Have you guys I mean, seen Project Power yet? No, not Project. So no. it's actually has a creator in it that we talk about when, or we have talked about when we got together and, you know, just talked about YouTube and stuff. Casey Neistat. Yeah. Right. I he's actually in this movie and oh, cool. I don't want to, I don't want to ruin it, but one of the powers is the pistol shrimp. And it's actually like the, when they take this pill, they get powers and one of the guy's powers is a pistol shrimp. And he said, you basically just blow everything up around you. I'm not sure if that's how they actually act in the wild, but I haven't done any research on them, but I didn't know if you could talk about that and talk about what the pistol shrimp does for, you know, survival, getting food. Cause that's what kept popped in my mind when you talked about the pistol shrimp. Well, pistol shrimp have like really, really, really poor eyesight. So that's why you find them in the wild. They actually, they pair with the goby. So when I got, this is my first saltwater tank for anyone that hasn't seen me or the tank behind me. Uh, I got it about four months ago now. Um, and I just got it with some corals uh, from a shop that was closing down. I came home and basically used the same water, same rocks, same corals, set it up and then let it sit for a while. And the whole thing that fascinated me about getting a saltwater tank was the symbiotic relationships mm. that some of the species have. So really obvious one is clownfish and anemones. Um, so that was always my sort of goal. But then, uh, I don't know, maybe a year ago, I was in a shop and I was watching this pistol shrimp carve out a hole or a cave in the sand. So he's constantly moving the sand around as Gobi just goes into the sand and then comes out and goes back in. And I'm like, <laughs> those two, what are they doing together? That's really cool. Um, and then I realized you buy them like that. You buy them as a pair. Um, and basically the pistol shrimp makes a home for the Gobi um, and the Gobi keeps the pistol shrimp safe. So. The goby is a watchman goby is a common one, um, basically on the lookout for any danger. And it wags its tail towards the pistol shrimp to let it know if something's approaching. And the, the faster it wags, then the pistol shrimp can feel that. So the pistol shrimp sort of goes back into its home and the goby can keep a, a watch out for it. Um, and then trouble passes and then the pistol shrimp is never satisfied. It's just like... I don't want to say what I want to say because I'll get in trouble, but um, 
<laughs> just constantly cleaning, constantly moving, constantly changing. Um, so it's never satisfied. So they're fantastic to, to watch. The pistol, the um, I'm not 100% sure how this fact works. Maybe one of you might know. But there is some notes saying that it's the loudest noise in the ocean is the pistol shrimp's claw. That and a whale. Yeah, right. With, I don't know exactly how that sort of works, but I can, and I hear it multiple times a day, I'll hear him crack his claw and it's just like... Just, oh, wow. It's coming from inside that tank. Um, That's crazy. Which is, yeah, it's really crazy. The one annoying thing about the pistol shrimp, I, I've chose the pistol shrimp over every other shrimp anyway, but um, you, I got a bit of a hair algae issue. It would be good to have some cleaning shrimp in there to try and help out a little bit, but the pistol shrimp is carnivorous. It would eat other shrimp. So mm. because I chose him, I can't get there. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, they're a fascinating creature. I ended up getting an anemone in there as well. So the clown is now housing in the anemone, which is amazing to watch because in the morning I can come in and the anemone will be pretty much closed. And the clown fish is like a little puppy, just like pushing at it, going, come on, like trying to snuggle into it all the time. Then you turn the lights on and an hour later it opens up and he's in there. Um, yeah, they're fascinating. So I will be getting another Watchman Goby when, yeah, whenever I can find find one that would be suitable it's going to probably take a long time to find one though that's cool hey tiffany yeah. and monica as well and um yeah i have a similar thing with my coral banded shrimp pair like they are really good at eating bristle worms and things like that but i can't put any other shrimp in there because they would eat them as well, <laughs> well actually the the guy that um ran the lilydale aquarium so he sold me this whole setup and I couldn't get the uh, ATO, so the automatic top up system to work. And the skimmer just, I just hadn't calibrated it properly, I think. So he had a quick look at it. He's like, yeah, just fix this, fix that, unplug. Well, I had something plugged in that apparently I shouldn't have, and that's probably what stopped me from getting it to work. Um, and he was recommending, he's like, so it's a 90 litre tank, which is what, like a 30 gallon or something like that? Um, yeah. About divided by four. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 20 something. 20 something. 22, Two. three. Um, it's, he was saying get a, like a really young fox face or tang. Just get a little one. You're going to have to sell it in a year or whatever because it'll get too big. But apparently they love picking off hair algae. So I was like, oh, didn't think about that. So I'll probably have a chat with uh, Sam Parker or Shane if he's still here, Ugly Man's Reefing, on that idea. Uh, you have to be uh, prepared for the tank police. Apparently in the saltwater hobby, there's a thing called the tank police where everyone gets into you for keeping tangs in small tanks. Could generate some more interest. It would be a bit of fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it might be the sort of thing where I'd say they're both setting up these awesome, amazing tanks. So um, I don't have links. I'm struggling with the links because I'm the only mod here, Kendall. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to chat and post links. Um <laughs> check out Parker's Reef and check out Ugly Man. Oh, and you don't you have so many videos. Check out Ugly Man on Facebook because he's got photos of the um, the tank he's setting up. It might be sort of, I'll buy one of them and I can then hand it over to them, you know, a year down the track when it gets too big or something cool like that anyway. Nice. Sweet. So I just wanted to answer this comment real quick. It was from Tiffany Rose. First of all, thank you for being here, Tiffany. But... Is your online store up yet? Will you have pygmy corridors and guppies? I'm in the market for both. Hello to Aquamate and Blake. So the online Hello. store is currently up. I think I launched it like a little over a month ago. And, you know, a lot of people don't actually know about it because I still, I used to sell on Get Gills, which is Dan's Fish's website where everyone can just make a store of their own. And then they can sell their fish. They can sell dry products, plants, different things like that. But I wanted to create my own website. That way I had a home base for myself. And it was more of a brand decision to create that website. But, yes, that website is currently up. I don't have any pygmy corridors, but there are, I want to say, eight to ten different strains of guppies on the website right now. Um 
pygmy corridors. You can look on get gills. I think Dan's fish actually has some. So that's not something that I'm currently keeping in the fish room. I know that Josh does keep them or he has kept them. I'm not sure if he still has them or not, but it's actually one of one of the best viewing videos you have on your channel. Is that right? Yeah, it's still kicking along a bit over 5,000 views now, so doesn't no signs of it slowing down, which is pretty cool. I've only got a couple left, but Blake's actually bred them recently. Yeah, yeah, That's I bred sweet. them a little while back. That was mainly because we had a little competition, Josh and I. I do love a good competition, especially when you got so many breeding projects and things on the go. I find that I need that little bit of extra edge to push me to like do those live food feedings and the rainwater water changes and those sorts of things. Um, so it's good fun when you can involve other people in your in your fish room as well. And that was good, good fun. So I would recommend that too. If you've got something that you're kind of struggling to breed, but you're kind of also potentially not putting as much effort into them as you might need to, you know, just if you have a friend that keeps them or encourage your friend to buy some or something and then have a little competition amongst yourselves or, or something, you know, challenge yourselves and it's good fun. Yeah. Yeah, that's always fun. No one really around me keeps fish, but so I that's why, I, you know, got to go off online to get mine. But yeah, that's that's definitely a way to get some if you know you have a friend, and that's actually a good good way to keep fish because if you buy fish and you have a tank crash or something like that, then you can always revert back to that friend to be able to get that stock back up, or they can help you out if they're currently breeding them. So if you have a close friend that keeps tanks as well, if you buy a fish like that, ask them if they're interested as well. That way you guys will always have a supply of that fish. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, even though I don't know if Sir Pronolot is still here or not, but I sent him out some of my shrimp and things, you know, just in case. he, I didn't charge or anything, but that's because, you know, if something does go wrong, then I'll be uh, putting the call out to get my colony back. Or well, some of them, at least, you know. Yeah, I uh, I don't think I have any mods here. <laughs> just Josh, and he's busy. <laughs> yeah, I'm constantly it just doing bad. things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you for doing that. <laughs> no, I I actually have my channel brought up because you know if anyone is interested in being a mod, because I I have a few, but I know it's not that many. A lot of them were a couple old fish tubers that don't really do it anymore. So if you know, if you're following the channel and you would like to be a mod, let me know and I'll make you one. Yeah, People anybody like who types right in the chat you can just right click on the three dots and make him a mod that way too. It's easy. See you, Monica, uh, thanks for joining us. Kendall, can you see Perth Cichlid's comment there? Yeah, see you, Monica. The one about Parker says hello. Yeah. yeah. Can you put it up on the screen so we can see it? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Parker. <laughs> Go the Eagles. Hey, Hope you didn't get in too much trouble with all those super chats the other day. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the comment I had up was talking about Oscars. I know uh, I don't keep any Oscars currently. I've kept one in the past. I think I had like two of them in a 55 gallon a while back. But you now I I recently reverted to smaller fish just because I am trying to breed for profit and sell them. But you know, I I like keeping bigger fish, but with the smaller tanks that I have in here, I don't really have the space. I have one more rack to build and I'm not sure what size I'm going to go with. I've actually asked a few people, and if you could answer it in the chat right now, I think the choices were I can do 12 20-gallon highs, three 40-gallon breeders, or two 75 gallons. That was the choices. So if you had the choice between those three, what would you like to do? Um, 12 20-gallons I'd probably do. You think so? Yeah, I probably would. That's what were what, the other two choices? I have a rack of nine twenties right now, but 
I thought about just doing the 75 just so I could keep some bigger fish. Like I have some angel fish and rainbow fish in my 40 breeders right now, but 40 breeders, they're not, they're really not that big. I'm just trying to see, I can show you perhaps. Let me see. Uh, I was going to change my background to one of the fish room because I have on one side, I have a row of four, 75s we'll say for simplicity and then on the other side i've got two six foot racks with mostly 20s and i think it's good to have a balance like this one behind me is a 75. right but mainly like the 75s are for injecting co2 and having high lighting and doing them nice and planted where the the 20s are for purely breeding so you put a pair of epistos or whatever in there and, and off they go. Let's see. All right, so we got a couple people. Blake Houghton says 40 breeders, 75s, and 75 from Ian Atkins. Yeah, I, I would like to keep two bigger tanks because – like I said, I could keep some bigger fish, but you know, that kind of takes away from what I'm trying to do. That would be mm. a whole lot of space in the fish room where I would just be keeping fish for myself. You yeah. know, and I, which I, I kind of have that. <laughs> I kind of have that with my I have one seventy five with just a Jaguar cichlid in it. And I really like him, but I do also, like, it'd be a lie if I wasn't like, oh, I could do that, plant it and put, you know, something something special in there. But who knows? I do like like the Jag also, and it's good to have a bit of contrast as well, I think. Well, it's sort of, you answered your own question a little bit there, Kendall, that you, um, you can sort of go for the larger amount of tanks to have more nano species or whatever you're selling online. Um or are you going to have tanks that you sort of, they're your display tank, they're sort of like the tank you work on and build up. Like I'm not breeding anything to sell anything. So every tank that I'm trying to do from now on is trying, I'm trying to make it a, a display tank. Um, All right. So yes, you're right. If you're selling stuff, you take up some of that space, but yeah, I don't know for the channel. I reckon it would be beneficial to have, maybe a large tank with the same species that you're breeding, but, you know, planted, scaped and be like a bit of a feature and go, yeah. oh, if you like these, yeah, I've got them up here. You know, they're breeding up here or whatever. Yeah, I currently have two tanks that are basically just show tanks and yeah. they are the 40 breeders. And one I've got angel fish, koi angels and dwarf neon rainbows. And the other one, I've got electric blue acara and let's see, Corydora <laughs> Adolphi. The top one is basically a breeding for profit tank too, although it's kind of a display. It's got the uh, bumblebee platys and the salt and pepper, or the peppered Corydoras, the Corydoras paleatus. Nice. So. Yeah, I think one, I don't know if you've seen the video that I did at Blake's um, place going through his fish room. That was one thing that I was like, oh, I love the way he's doing this. He's growing different fish and different plants and different tanks. And then he can just go to that tank and go, I'm going to get a couple more of those plants and put them in his display. And then he had like beautifully planted tanks with all different sort of fish, obviously a bit bigger than most of the other fish. Uh, but it was like he was growing plants to be like his own shop for his own display tank. So like he's not <laughs> wanting out buying, he's growing the stuff and then putting it in the display. Yeah. So there you go. So that's why I, I was sort of talking about, we've got 75s along here and then more of the breeding action. So like I sort of see it as this aisle here is for me and that aisle there is for, you know, for my projects and stuff. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Like this, this, these are all 10 gallons. There's 25 of them. And this is all guppies, endlers, and shrimp. So that's basically what I specialize in on the website. And 
they're all strains. None of them are mutts. And then over here, the 20 we'll be highs. Back in a okay. The 20 highs, I've just been basically breeding things that I thought would be fun to breed, like the Koi Angels. I actually pulled a pair out of that 40 gallon breeder, and I've been breeding the Electric Blue Akara. I've nice. got the Maltese, like I talked about, the Shell Dwellers. I've got a pair of Super Red Bristle Nose. More guppies and endlers, so you know I'm kind of expanding outside of the nano fish a little bit, but because it keeping the same thing and breeding the same thing over and over and over, it kind of gets boring. Yeah, it absolutely. Like, does. You're like, oh my gosh, like I need something else. So that's kind of my play with side over there, and this yeah. is breeding for profit right here. Yeah, so. yeah, and no, I totally understand that. I, I think it is refreshing to have different sort of areas where you are doing different things in as well like like these that tank there uh, this is really hard to do backwards but these two tanks along the bottom and then that tank on the top corner they're all just guppies and they're just colony breeding together right. so i do nothing in there and then we've got different types of bristle nose in each and sh and shrimp in each but i don't have to do anything in there occasionally i pull a, a bit of duckweed out but it also means that I don't really sit there and make sure everything's going along well either. So sometimes I also think that's a lot of real estate. You know, I could put a lot of 20 gallons on the side there right. instead of three tanks. But I don't know. I don't think there's any right or wrong answer. I think it's a continually moving thing and, and yeah, just be flexible with it and don't be afraid to update everything every now and then. And that's one thing I'm kind of struggling with right now is that there are, I don't want to say so many tanks because I think there's like 40 total, but having to do water changes because I still use a Python. I don't have an automatic water change system or anything mm -hmm. like that, which that may be something that I'm going to work on in the future. But this goes back to me working seven twelves in a row. It's yeah. like, how, how do I have time to do water changes on 40 aquariums when you work that much? But I was, um, a lot of people might um, shudder at the thought of this, but I was thinking of actually linking all these, um, at least like this these rows, like the row of 520s and then the row of 520s underneath. I was thinking of linking them all with a water bridge and then that way I could just drain from one and fill from one and it would save me a lot of moving around but right. obviously there's downsides to that as well and risks oh, like yeah. if a steam blows out on one then i lose five tanks or if it breaks out in one then i lose five tanks etc but i don't know i'm kind of tempted to do it to be honest we'll see i mean you could at least do it to try it out yeah another thing would be if you know one fish gets sick you got to spend way more money treating five different tanks that's right, yeah. But, right. I mean, for those, for the five that I'm, I'm going to be looking at them, but so the, for the five along the top, there's only really 10 or 12 fish because it's mostly just pairs. So, I mean, it's pairs of a pisto. So it's not like there's 80 guppies in one and, you know, 100 shrimp in another or something like that. Like, I don't know. I think, think it's fairly low risk, but, yeah, we'll see. And g'day to Jesse as well. I was wondering uh, when we'd see you. Not usual to miss a, miss a stream, Jesse. <laughs> yeah, I just uh, I just put his comment up on the screen. I appreciate oh, you being here, Jesse. <laughs> but now that we're, you know, we're almost pushing an hour, but uh, one thing I wanted to talk about was memberships. Like, I know a lot of people are getting memberships now a lot of people are pushing memberships but one thing that i wanted to try to do for members which you know i have three members and they're all on the screen right now but now other than that you know there's different tiers to membership and how much money you can put toward memberships and one thing i wanted to do was like people that are members you know we can do a bid on different types of fish on the website 
if you're at a certain tier, you know, I would send you a free trio of guppies or endlers, you know, whatever I had on overstock, or we could do live streams if you're at a certain tier. So if you're at this tier, then you can be put in or asked to do a live stream once a month with me, kind of like we're doing now, just hanging out talking. But other than that, you remember. <laughs> Welcome, Jesse. Jesse. Nice one. Hey, it works, don't it? You talk about it, it happens. <laughs> but no, uh, no, I I don't think it's necessary for people to spend money to be able to do that stuff. But it's always fun to follow people that you follow a lot like i'm memberships to both of these guys channel and i talk to them quite a bit so i want to be able to see that behind the scenes stuff that they're doing small short videos so i just wanted to touch base on the membership before we got out of here because i never made a video about it i never even talked about it i just put it up there and whoever seen it seen it but yeah that's a pretty good one from Cichlids23. Well, Jesse, a helper. <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> but, yeah, we also get cool custom emojis. So, I mean, that's worth signing up for in itself. But you are right. It does. It all goes around what, what goes around comes around. And, and uh, yeah, I I've, I've have the same outlook as well. Like, like, like supporting people who support me and so on and so forth. All right. Like, I'll... I don't think I'm a member of Jesse's channel, but I'm going to go be a member now for sure. G'day, Matt. Good to see you here. Nice link work there, Acclimate. Good job. i got a notepad all set up. I feel like candy. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm>, we, <laughs> it's only taken me an hour to figure out what I should be doing. <laughs> nice work. So, Kendall, did we cover off well enough on the topic we did get sidetracked a couple of couple of different ways but that's good yeah too, i think so. we did you know i i'd like to see what a lot of the people in the chat think about buying online versus you know going to an actual store especially people like jesse that lives in hawaii i know he ships fish in the united states because i've actually bought fish from him and he has amazing guppies as well he has a store on Git Gills like I used to before I created my own website. So if you're interested in guppies, definitely go check out him as well. You know, I'm not just trying to push my website for you all to buy guppies and endlers. There's a lot of people out there that have really good strains of guppies. And that's, that's where I buy a lot of mine to breed for profit is from other people that are selling them like Jesse, Lucas. You know, I'm trying to find those people that are you know, paying attention to the specific strains, they're calling their fish, and it's just going to make the hobby better for everybody. Yeah. And actually, Mapped um, brings up one thing. I guess we are locked down in parts of Melbourne at the moment, so we don't really have much choice. But also, I've found lately that it's obviously winter time down here where we are, and a lot of places just aren't willing to ship to us at the moment. I've been reaching out to a lot of my usual um, you know, businesses and stuff that I talk to. And, yeah, they're just not willing to send stuff at the moment because it's really cold and the postal system is getting some crazy delays. So that's a bit of an interesting one as well. I'm, I've, never, I've never really had my hand out shaking money, like, take it, take it, and then they don't want to. So what do we, what do, we do there, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Lefty Wait. says he bought they buy fish online nine times out of ten. So Lefty's actually bought some endlers from me. And Lefty was one of the ones that there were DOAs, you know, that happens. They bought some of the lime green endlers, but I ended up going back and just sending brand new fish. So but they say that they're really doing well, so that's what I like to see. If I can ship fish and they land good and the people have success with them, you know, that's that's the whole purpose of me doing it. Not only to make make money, but it helps people out and they can have success with the fish as well. <laughs> Lefty, you can have my money, but you have to ship the fish there. That's going to be an issue for you, I think. <laughs> 
<clears throat> where, where does Lefty live? Um, is, do you buy nine times out of ten online because it's too hard to get to an aquarium or you just prefer to do it? Hmm. That's a good question. Uh, EJ Fishes says the convenience of buying fish online is better, but also like to see what's at the local fish store. Yeah. And that's what we talked about at the beginning is that, you know, we can go online. I do this all the time while I'm at work. I'll go online. I'll put a whole bunch of fish in my cart, you know, and they'll sit there for a while. I do it. <laughs> I do it all the time. I always do it to steam fought because he sells a lot of rainbow fish. And like, I'll be like, man, I really want to buy some new fish because I'm <laughs> bored at work. I'm just on my phone. So I'm looking at different stuff, go on the website, add a bunch. And then I'm like, I don't even really know where I'm going to put all these rainbow fish. <laughs> so the convenience of being able to get on your phone, which is probably in your hand in the first place and look at fish, press a button after typing in your card info and then them arriving at your doorstep two or three days later. It's crazy. <laughs> that, was, that was me. Uh, yesterday I, unboxed two pairs of wild betters and i i pressed order and then the next day i was in the fish room looking around and i was i had the same thing i was like where am i gonna put these <laughs> i have yeah. no idea but that's part of the challenge too sometimes and you get to find out about different compatibilities and things like that as uh as those sort of challenges come up yeah that was one thing about me moving from my fish room in the spare bedroom to the garage like fish are in completely different tanks that they were in while they were in that fish room. Like I've changed up the combination of things that were together. So mm. it's been, it's been fun playing musical fish. And I know a lot <laughs> of people talk about that all the time. It's like, no, oh, let's just throw this one in here right now so we can go buy something else. But Absolutely. I actually, um, that's what I'm going to be doing this weekend is oh, changing one of these over. Hello, Harry. Um, <laughs> changing some of these over because I've got yeah two types of shrimp together at the moment and I want to separate them. And then I'm like, oh, then maybe I can take one type of fish and one type of shrimp and put them somewhere else. So I'm going to be doing that. I like that musical musical fish. <laughs> yeah. Look at how that good's that. He's blurry in the background. <laughs> God. G'day, lads, as well. Very good. Lefty came back and said it's more convenient, like we talked about, and LFSs are kind of gross. The local <laughs> one is gross, or all of them are gross? <laughs> lads, yeah. hey, our, our LFSs. Yeah. <laughs> what did you guys, what's your experience on that? Are the yeah, fish stores I, clean around your area? No, there's there's the closest one to me. Like they're they're a pretty good store, but it's set up like it is one of our houses. You know, like not not to say that we have bad houses, but like you open up this sliding glass door and it's very humid and you know it's fine for me to go into. And you guys would probably love going in there as well. But if you try and take your kids in there or your wife in there, she's you know, it's just like this. This is a horrible experience. Why do I want to walk around this humid room looking at these random tanks with nothing in them except for fish? So it's set up definitely for a hobbyist, but that store, not uh, not the random family that wants a new pet. But I mean, there's good ones and bad ones, that's for sure. Yeah, it's definitely good ones and bad ones. The one I think I'm not a snob or anything, but it, I do sort of. I think because I've worked in retail and stuff before and managed retail shops, the one thing that probably gets me is when things are dirty or boxes are left out and that sort of thing. It kind of go, and if there's no order to it, I'm like, it just feels cluttered. Yeah. Um, and I I can't help it. I pick up on it really quickly. <laughs> but um, in saying that. The stores that are usually like that have one or two employees, and then the stores that look really clean have six, seven, or eight. Like, so you, you know that they're sort of running that ship, going, "All right, well, I'm paying six people. 
there's no one in the shop. Everyone clean tanks. Everyone move stock. Everyone keep busy. Yeah. Yeah, and that that's basically like running a fish room only you know you're not there 24 7 so <laughs> if you're doing it all by yourself it becomes pretty difficult unless they have auto water change systems or and a lot of especially around here none of those none of the fish stores are that advanced where they have auto water change systems but most of the people plus they have to deal with you know, customers coming up asking them questions. So, if you're cleaning a tank and then you got to go help someone get fish, well, then that tank's going to have to sit there dirty for another 30 minutes until you can get that customer out the door. But <laughs> no, it don't bother me none. But there's Jesse, a couple I wish here I that are really clean, a couple that are kind of dirty. <laughs> yeah. It's an interesting one. Like I, I don't, I don't really mind necessarily if a store is dirty, so long as the fish are in good condition. But yeah. you do have to wonder if they, if they're not paying the time to pick up the cardboard boxes or clean up the puddle of water in the middle of the walkway. Then are they spending the time to medicate the fish or you know make sure that things are are being properly looked after as well? Actually, right. I got. That's, I've never really spoken about it to anyone. I haven't heard anyone talk about it either. What is your opinion when you walk into an aquarium and you look at a tank and you highlight those fish and there's a dead fish in the tank? What are the things you think? Like, do you cut them slack and go, it's going to happen? You've got 3,000 fish in here. Yeah. Or do you go, eh, dead fish in that tank, not even going to look at that or I'm not even going to look at the aquarium? For me, I'm pretty confident in healing them back. So, it does, like, I wouldn't really be concerned. I'd just look at the fish that I want to get. And if they look healthy to me, then I'd probably take the punt if it was something that I really wanted. Um, it depends to me as well what the time of day is. Like, if it's the start of the day and most likely the fish just went in there, mm, interesting. But if it's, like, the end of the day, and the whole day nobody is bothered to net that dead fish out, then that to me rings a bit of an alarm bell. Yeah, well, I suppose it's a tricky one because it, you go in late in the day and there's a dead fish and you think that, but then they might have just got the shipment in and um, yeah. that could have been a DOA that they've just missed or, yeah, but then maybe they didn't and then maybe it was they were in bags too long. I, I do usually let them know as well. Like I'll go up to a staff member and I'll be, hey, just to let you know there's a dead fish in there. Sometimes you can tell by their reaction, you know. Sometimes like, oh, you know, I better get it straight away. And other other times I'll be like, oh, yeah, okay. Harry does it. aquariums all the time. I've been walking around. He's like, excuse me, excuse me, you have a dead fish here. Oh, and you've got a dead fish over here while they're trying to serve someone else. I'm like, Harry, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> What's your thoughts, yeah. Kendall? One, one thing is that you know, being around fish every day and seeing deaths in the in an aquarium, you know, you can kind of see where that fish is at in its state of death. Like you can tell if a fish just died or if it's been sitting there getting eat on ate on for you know a, a day or two. So that's a good point. Yeah. It's that's got all fungus. There's all fungus growing out of the back half of it, then I'd probably be a bit more concerned as well. <laughs> right. But are you talking about like in a, a fish store or like a actual aquarium that you go to and visit? And aqua No, 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 like a fish store. So if you're going to go buy oh, okay. fish and they've got amazing endless that you've never seen before, you're like, I've got to get some of them, but there's four, no, one or two dead on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you still buy them? I'm pretty confident with my ability to diagnose, like, especially live bear issues. Yeah. So, I don't know. I may, I may like, count them and then come back in a couple of days, see if they lost any more. I've never actually been in that situation, but that's probably where I would go. It's like, okay, I see that there's this many. You know, we can come back in a couple of days, see if they lost any more, and definitely check them out. You know, you could have them put them in a little 
specimen container, see if you could get a closer look to see if you can diagnose what's going on. But bringing them home, you know, I would definitely quarantine, especially if you've seen dead fish in the tank. But I'm pretty confident in actually giving medication to be able to make a healthy fish, I guess. So another good tip. I would go. Another good tip, I guess it depends. Like if you're in a new local fish store and, and you're not really um, you don't have a relationship with the with the staff or anything, then I always like to stand there when they're catching my fish. I don't like to be like, oh, I want six cardinal tetras and then walk away and keep looking at things because I have found at times um, when it's bagged up, you know, you sort of get a bit complacent. You get it to the car or you get it home and you're like, what the, this is three cardinals and three neon tetras or something. And then, you know, it's like a whole big thing. So I find that if you're actually standing there watching, um, not being like, I want that specific tetra, you know, then, you know, that most of the times they'll they'll pick out some decent ones for you if, you if you're being attentive and you seem to know what you're talking about. All right. Have you ever been to a fish store and been like, okay, I need some of these, then they go to scoop some out, and you're like, no, I need that one right there. Yeah. And, I'm and they're like, oh, my God, it's <laughs> the same fish. It's like, no, it's not. Yeah. That one- that one's a male and it's way healthier than all those other ones. I've also been like, you know, when there's two or three different types of fish in a tank, and I'll be like, I want those Kerai Tetras. And they'll just be like, which ones are the Kerai Tetras? Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. Those it's ones. Like, yeah, maybe you, sh- maybe you shouldn't be getting my fish. <laughs> I've also had it where the, they've just really been struggling and I've, I've been there like, look, no offense, but do you want me to work the net? Like I, I catch fish most days. I can, I can do it. And sometimes yeah. if they're new staff, they'll be like, yeah, sure. Whatever. I don't really care. Yeah. That's the other thing as well. Like you go, Oh, you know, I'm in an $50 for the fish. Like it's not cheap. It's going to work. Yeah. All right. I'll get it. And then they spend two or three minutes stressing the hell out of it, trying to catch it. And you're like, oh, now I'm going to have this like fish. That's super stressed. I'm going to take it. <laughs> I'm going to try and, you know, acclimate it the best that I can and be take ages, like extra effort and care with it. Um, and the ones that I'm thinking of are like discus and sometimes discus can freak real easy and like they have a heart attack or something at <laughs> the time. Yeah. Um, I also would recommend Kendall make lefty a mod. He's uh, pretty handy with the, the links and all that stuff. And if he's bought from you and you guys know each other, yeah, Lefty's good operator. He won't he won't mess up your channel on you. He doesn't come to my streams anymore, but I might as well still give him a shout out. He sent me <laughs> aquarium co-op hats, so you know that's a bonus. <laughs> he'll he'll send you one for making him a mod here, suggesting him be your mod. One. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he should be a mod now. Um, I don't know if local fish stores are open near me, Laz. I haven't been to one in way too long. I've just been ordering online. So GRB says not many stores will survive if they're not looking after their livestock and tanks. True. That's true. Yeah. Definitely agree. The one time I didn't stand there, the girl aggressively netted my dual eye and split his fin. End up going back to get a new one. Yeah. And that's hard too. Like if you buy, like if for myself, for example, if I buy a $30 trio of guppies that I'm going to try to breed, you know, if I'm not looking after them and I lose that male, I'm out 30 bucks because that male is gone. I'm not going to be able to breed that strain. And I feel like it's the same way with, fish stores like if if they import fish or get it from a wholesaler if they're not medicating and watching out for that livestock then they're basically going to lose that money if those fish pass away before they sell them so true that's Um, one thing i think aquarium co-op does really well is like he knows that he always talks about how he buys his fish straight up 
So him knowing that that money is on the line, you know, that's that's why they take so good of care of their fish that they bring in. Mm. And and it's a reputational thing as well, you know, like yeah, for sure. You might save a couple of bucks here or there, but you'll lose it in the long run. And if you build the customer base like he has or what I presume he has, then you know, pays dividends in the end. Yeah. But that's yeah. You got um, anything to add on that? <laughs> GRB. Laz uh, has a question. All right. What websites do you recommend getting fish off in Australia? Yeah, I mean, I have different ones for different needs, but um, I like to, I've had pretty good experiences with Coburg Aquarium online. Um, we, I got the betters from Seven Fishes. That was pretty good. If you want so Australia, what's up? I haven't heard of Seven Fishes. So where? What's that? Oh, uh, they do a lot of betters. Basically, all betters, like in Melbourne or. Uh, they're in Queensland somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Um, where else will I order from? Natives you can get from Liverpool Creek Um, and then all fish to you for a bunch of stuff. I'm, um, not, I'm not biased in telling any of these names either, by the way. I don't get any gain from it. Yeah. Kendall, one of the things as well that I thought of at the start of the stream was um I'm curious, like, as Blake said, it seems to be more common buying fish online in America because of the setups that you guys have. But I don't know how hard it is to get fish from Western Australia over here. I remember there was a time where I was talking about getting uh, Perth cichlids to send some cichlids over to my local fish store who specialise in cichlids too, that maybe I could just do an order and get some different species. Yeah, but everyone just said it's too hard and way too expensive to try and ship from WA over here. So it's almost like there's a big line as well down the middle. And then we can't have koi; they can have koi. They can't have shrimp; we can have shrimp. It's really weird too. Yeah, it's like Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue. You know, sometimes <laughs> you can you can have a Vulpix, and other times you get a Geo Dude. I'm sure everybody here knows what I'm talking about there. <laughs> Yeah, so I remember you talked about that a little bit. Was I think you were actually talking about shipping fish, and we talked about how I do it and some different things you could do. But yeah, I, I'm not sure what your rates are for shipping in Australia, but for me, it's like fifteen dollars to send a little box of fish. Yeah, if I go to, to a little bit bigger, it's like twenty bucks. Yeah, when I ship um, shrimp. I do it in like a little styrofoam esky or styrofoam box. And yeah. that's about $20 to send it most places in Australia. So with the conversion, it's probably pretty similar. That yeah, one of them. $15 postage. Oh, yeah. So, So he's trying to ship from Western Australia to you and it would be more expensive than that? Uh, I think the thing is, if you want to ship into Western Australia, you need to basically have some sort of import license of some kind. I think oh. there's only one company that does it, really. It's called um, livefish, livefish.com.au. And um, they've got some sort of workaround so that it's really easy for them. But most other places, you need you need something else crazy going on. So it would kind of be like, the U S and Canada, even though they're right next yeah. to each other, you know, if you're just shipping right across the line, you're going to have to do an import. You're going to have to pay probably more shipping. I've never shipped to Canada, but I'd say that's probably about the same concept, but yeah, I didn't know. I thought, I thought Australia was all, you know, this, I guess same same well, thing. Yeah, it should should be, you would think, but yeah. We only have seven states or territories. So it's yeah. It is a bit weird that some things are illegal on one side and not the other, but then obviously 
different climates, so different things can cause different issues in the in the wild. So how many states are considered that western part? One. This one. <laughs> this one. Western. So the, the whole yeah, course, western side is one. Of course, that's where Perth lives, huh? That's right. Yeah. There's only three. There's only five people that live there. Rumble and his partner, Jason and his partner, and then their son. That's it. And the best football team in the country. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> a couple more than five actually live there, but yeah. <laughs> so one person one person that I've seen in the chat that I want to kind of shout out is Lazarus, who is actually up on the screen right now. I did see your message that you sent the Facebook page about that collab after me and Blake did mine together. If you would try to send my personal account a message because for some reason, like I guess with it being fish or selling fish, it's kind of crazy. And Facebook kicks me off every now and then within that Otter Creek Aquatics page. So I wasn't able to respond to that message. And just seeing your name, I remembered it. So if you send me a message, I'll definitely message you back, buddy. Uh, <laughs> Matt, I agree. <laughs> Who's maps go for? Geelong? Uh, I don't know. We'll soon find Matt out. Who do you game? go for? <laughs> uh, C23 <laughs> football is on right there. No oh, padding. Yeah. Can you get your head around that? No padding. Whoa. <laughs> I can't see it. It's too blurry on this fancy camera you got set up. No. <laughs> what do you say? What are you watching? Aussie rules, mate. <laughs> <laughs> AFL. Oh, oh. That's oh, unfortunate, Matt. That is Hawks. unfortunate. Who did Hawthorne lose to last week? <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Who cares? It's the real response. I'm back to the fish. I'm pretty <laughs> sure Haw Hawthorne's <laughs> lost me some money before. <laughs> so, yes. oh, Bodgie's in the house. Prepare for 1.5 thousand messages to fly through. And references to pirates. Are <laughs> <laughs> Can Rummy Nose go in a 20 gallon? Yes, they can. Do you guys keep any Tetras in a 20-gallon tank? I don't think I do. Um, no, not really. I don't have a 20-gallon tank. No, I don't think so. Rummy nose are really cool because they school so tight together. They're the best so. fish in the world. Easy, hands down, dumb. <laughs> yeah. I have 16 I really like Tetras in a 12-gallon, I would say it is. 10 or 12-gallon. I uh, thought it's the wrong tank. And then I have 17 rummy nose in a 55. And once I finish the rescape on the 55, I will add probably another 100 rummy nose, I reckon. Nice. That will look sick. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you guys have anything else on buying fish online versus fish stores? <laughs> Um, <laughs> not really just yeah kind of what josh touched on that it is beneficial to actually go and see what you're actually going to get know what size the fish is and all that sometimes you know it can say a five centimeter fish online and it turns up and it's a two and a half centimeter fish or something right or two inch and it turns up one inch that was like when i bought my multis i bought them from i bought them online and when they came in, they were so tiny. I was like, oh, my gosh, how are these guys even still alive? <laughs> they just, like, look like little specks. I'm like, how? why didn't you all grow those out a little more? But they all made it. They're all, yeah, Chris. They're all alive, and they, they've grown a lot. Yeah, nice. Yeah, Chris, well, um, just to another actually... question. When you guys buy fish, do you like to buy them in bigger sizes? Or do you like to get them small and grow them out? Uh, hmm. well, I don't mind growing them. Yeah. I don't mind at all. Yeah, no, I don't mind either. And I also definitely would like discus. I would definitely want to buy them smaller. I feel like they 
less touchy. Um, it's funny because my um, rummy nose are twice the size of any other rummy nose I see in stores. Oh, there's a few stores that might have some older, bigger ones, but um, I find like a lot of things like Tetras and stuff, you, you have to buy them not quite fully grown. Because it's another thing too when a shop has have you got any neon tetras yeah they're over in that tank and there's like 200 in there so there's certain ones that are stronger than others and then you buy 10 and then all of a sudden they're not competing for food as much and and then they will they'll grow up and yeah and get stronger as well look another stream in half an hour who is it any friends Who's going in a half hour? Anthony Fishy Friends. Oh. Yeah, he, he usually has some really fun live streams. Oh, yeah, maps. I've got some new angel fish on the way. Should I spoil it? Nah, I won't spoil it. But next week, we got an unboxing of some new angel fish, and I think they are my favorite type. So yeah, the, one, <laughs> the ones you're getting are also one of my favorite types. Yeah, I think that's super cool. They're amazing. A lot of people I know like Ultims, but I, I'm not that much of an Ultim Angel guy, personally. Yeah, I like them just because they're like, I feel like they're the OG of the Angel Fish, but they look really good if you have a lot of them together. Yeah. Of the more like, domesticated types, I quite like these Platinum Pearl Scales. I mean, some of those are gold heads, but the original parents were platinum pearl scales. And I, I quite like those. One of the first tanks that ever sold me on Angelfish was a tank full of Altums. And I just, you could put your finger on it and they would just all, shh. I'm like, yep, Angelfish are amazing. Yeah. I, I love when you have a, a big spawn of like 100 or so and you just put your finger in the top and they just all come up and attack your finger. It's pretty cool. Well, I have never successfully raised mine yet. I, I've i been trying to let the parents do it, but I think I'm going to have to pull the eggs out. I've sold I've sold hundreds. And, like, all of these are, are babies that I've grown up from an original pair. So really? the pair I've spawned, like, four or five different times. And I don't really actively sell them, but people will just message every now and then. Like, yesterday when I took the photo for the thumbnail, there was angel fish in there. And that's just because somebody randomly messaged like, hey, you got angels? Can I buy 10? I was like, okay. So already in a bag when you're like, hey, can you take a photo of a bag of fish? I was like, sure. <laughs> One thing I want to see somebody do is uh, breed some kois with some blacks. And like, you know how the kois have a lot more white on them? Yeah. It would just be like straight black and orange. Like a lot of black with like an orange head. That would be pretty cool, yeah. I think those would be amazing. Yeah, I like that idea. The only type I keep is are the Koi's. I'm waiting for Blake to do it now. <laughs> like, I'm going to get <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, next week I'll make some for you. Okay, well, <laughs> if you do that and I can't even have some, there's, that's going to be an issue. If I got to sit here and watch them through a screen – I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> be like, oh, yeah, I'd like to get some of those, but I got to go all the way to Australia to get them. <laughs> Worth it. Do a fish room tour while you're down here. They always do well. Yeah. That would be fun. I've always wanted to go to Australia. Well, I've, I've started telling people so that I have to make it happen. I'm coming across for Aquashella next year. It's just, it's going to happen, so lock it in. I don't know which one, but next year I'll be there. If we're allowed, it would be good. <laughs> yeah, if we're allowed, too. Ugh. Go away, see. man. So, oh, David Harvey's in here. So David actually just ordered some guppies from me. Cool. I shipped them out. Uh, shipped them out on Tuesday, and I think they got there yesterday. 
but they were the black metal jackets. He said they all arrived fine, so that's all I can ask for is everything to show up perfect. So I hope they do well for you, David. They're a lot of fun, and they're absolutely amazing. Nice. Yeah, Lefty, I'll have to hire a minibus, and we'll just drive around picking up people on the way, and it'll be a cool pilgrimage to uh, Aquashella. We'll make it happen. we got time. Josh is going to come too. Multi-tank yeah. addiction. Would I be interested in being a guest on the stream Tuesday? Uh, depending on what time, i got to work Tuesday night at 6 p.m., and that's Eastern Standard, which if it was Wednesday or Thursday, I definitely could. But i got to work Sunday, Monday, Tuesday night. So, But, yeah, definitely if – if ever our times line up, I'll definitely want to do that. Sounds like a lot of fun. Have either of you guys been on multi-tank addiction yet? No. 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 Not cool enough. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, I Chris, think it's fun going on on other people's. <laughs> I don't like hosting live streams. I like being a guest. Yeah. Makes it a whole lot easier. You can just sit there and laugh like Josh. Yeah. Well, well, my live streams that I host are a bit, you know, a bit different. They don't really allow for guests and things. Like, I'm too busy playing around with pitches and ranking things and all that stuff. So, Those are fun, though. I think a lot of people really enjoy those style of live streams. Yeah, I'm surprised. I thought everyone would be sick of it by now. But, you know, changing the topic and all that, everyone seems to like it. All right. I mean, you could always just throw like a random live stream in there like this one. You know, we yeah. kind of just came up with this topic last minute and I wrote a couple notes down and we just went went off the head for an hour and a half. Well, my live streams before I started doing the ranking games, before I started doing the information type ones, which were a podcast, they used to be just, you know, a few Aussies and Jesse came on a couple, I think, and you know, we'd just sit around and talk for a long time. We did a six-hour one once with no planning, just sitting there talking. Really? Yeah. I know. I Whenever I go live, I'm like, man, I don't think I have enough things to say for an hour. <laughs> then it's like I look up and it's like an hour and a half. I'm like, oh, where'd the time go? Yeah, 100%. It's pretty uh, crazy. Bodgy, you're a G tier now, mate. You've got no power. <laughs> HC Aqua says everyone has a fancy mic that's actually something that we talked about a little bit earlier before you got here was yeah. you know being a trying to be a YouTuber trying I should say you know upgrading gear it's kind of a uh, hobby within itself but it's it's fun trying to find different stuff to make your setup better <laughs> yeah and it's it's interesting as well we talk about um balancing the compatibility and playing fish musical chairs but it's also an interesting one balancing the ledger between new gear and new fish <laughs> there's never enough in either pile <laughs> yeah well do you guys have anything else you want to add before we head out uh, i guess just thanks for inviting me to come on the stream i think it's been a great um nearly two hours and uh thanks for the great people in the chat too always love interacting with you all out there yeah i appreciate everyone for coming back you know after so long it's i don't like saying that in the beginning of a video but you know it has been a while since i've done a live stream and the fact that you know you all keep coming back you see that see a notification and you come back you join you know it makes a huge difference and I really appreciate all of you for being here. And I really appreciate Josh and Blake for coming on. We tried to plan this last week, but our schedules didn't line up. So we pushed it a little bit later and it worked out. So I appreciate you all coming. No, absolutely. Thank you for having us. Is this going to be a regular thing? Yeah. Well, you the, way my, the way my work schedule is, is like I have – the same off days every other week, like instead of every week. So, Full like, all, 
I'll be off Monday, Tuesday. And then the next, let's say the following week, I'll have to work Monday, Tuesday. Then I'll be off Monday, Tuesday. So it that's what really sucks because a lot of people that do live streams, they do it every single week at the same time. And that keeps a lot of people coming back because a lot of people like that consistency. But the fact that my schedule is just so out of whack, plus we have to work overtime on random days. But definitely anytime we can get this in there, anytime I'm available to throw in a live stream, you know, anyone in the chat, if you all want to come in, hang out on the live stream, I'm cool with that. It's just fun hanging out and talking with different people, talking with Fitch. Talking with fish. <laughs> they don't talk back usually. I, I, I talk to mine all the time. <laughs> they just stare at me like, feed me. <laughs> but whatever. Yeah. But yeah, multi tank addiction, I'll definitely uh, send you a message about that. And anyone else, you know, if you guys are making videos or live streams and want to work with me or one of these guys, reach out to us it's always been it's pretty easy to get these guys to do it as long as their schedules line up yeah. i think we pretty much just the first time we talked we pretty much set something up so did he just call us easy <laughs> I well did. i am on the lookout for uh more victims for my top 10 crossovers i'm trying to twist jesse's arm so let's all just peer pressure him to do one with me and uh, yeah we'll be good. Uh, jesse definitely needs to do it <laughs> anyway hey, we'll I, bet, be right. I, I bet he has some good ideas absolutely but i'd love to love to pick oh, his brain on a few things so anyway right. sleep at number seven <laughs> yeah i want to get i want to get jesse on a live stream too just because i feel like he has so much to talk about yeah, he's a good dude. Other than that, thank you all for coming, and we'll see you in the next live stream. Awesome. See you. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>